Hello students and friends. Welcome to Homeopathy Medicines. Today in this Homeopathic Materia Medica lesson, I will discuss about Homeopathic Medicine Drosera. Before starting this video please subscribe to this channel for learn homeopathy online free and homeopathy materia medica. We need support from you to make this channel more beautiful and more informative. Now going to discuss about Drosera its uses and symptoms. Affects markedly the respiratory organs and was pointed out by Hahnemann as the principal remedy for whooping cough. Drosera can break down resistance to tubercle and should therefore be capable of raising it. Dr. Tyler. Laryngeal thysis is benefited by it. Thysis pulmonum, vomiting of food from coughing with gastric irritation and profuse expectoration. Pains about hip joint. Tubercular glands. Head, vertigo when walking in open air, with inclination to fall to the left side. Coldness of left half of face, with stinging pains and dry heat of right half. Stomach, nausea. Aversion to and bad effects from acids. Respiratory organs, spasmodic, dry irritative cough, like whooping cough, the paroxysms following each other very rapidly, can scarcely breathe, chokes. Cough very deep and hoarse, worse, after midnight, yellow expectoration, with bleeding from nose and mouth, retching. Deep, hoarse voice, hoarseness, laryngitis. Rough, scraping sensation deep in the fosses and soft palate. Sensation as if crumbs were in the throat, a feather in larynx. Laryngeal thysis, with rapid emaciation. Harassing and titillating cough in children not at all through the day, but commences as soon as the head touches the pillow at night. Clergyman's sore throat, with rough, scraping, dry sensation deep in the fosses, voice hoarse, deep, toneless, cracked, requires exertion to speak. Asthma when talking with contraction of the throat at every word uttered. Extremities, paralytic pains in the coax of femoral joint and thighs. Stiffness in joints of feet. All limbs feel lame. But feels too hard. Fever, internal chilliness, shivering, with hot face, cold hands, no thirst. Is always too cold, even in bed. Modalities, worse, after midnight, lying down, on getting warm in bed, drinking singing, laughing. The use of this medicine has been mostly limited to whooping cough, but it has a more extensive use. When we examine its spasmodic nature, its exhaustion, its cramps, which extend through a large number of complaints, we must realize that it is a more extensive remedy. Epileptiform spasms, prolonged sleeplessness, copious sweat on waking from sleep, restlessness and anxiety. Imagines that he is constantly persecuted, Flashes of heat, dread of the night. Many complaints come on in the night. Anxiety, sleeplessness, and fear of ghosts. Spasmodic cough. Fear of being alone and suspicious of his most intimate friends. Confusion of mind and much dizziness. Lancinating pains in various parts of the body, especially in the head, and must support the head with the hands. Must support the chest when coughing. Must press upon the abdomen. Oppressive, congestive headaches. Corrosive itching in various parts of the body with measles-like eruptions the eyeballs become prominent and congested from coughing during measles and in convulsions. Stitching pain in the eyes. Noises in the ears, roaring, humming and drumming. Earache in children. Stitching in the ears. Bleeding from various orifices, especially from the nose, throat, larynx, and chest when coughing in connection with the spasmodic coughs. Ordinarily the face is pale and sunken with heat of the face and he has cold extremities, except when coughing, at which time the face becomes red, congested, and purple like bell. And cupr. Stitching pains will be found in many complaints. Putrid taste in the mouth is a common symptom when it is found in physical conditions of the lungs, larynx, and also in whooping cough bloody saliva and hemorrhage from the mouth difficulty in swallowing solid foods constriction of the throat and of the larynx and constriction of the esophagus preventing swallowing cramping contriction runs all through the remedy cramping of the hands upon undertaking to hold on to something when grasping the broom handle in the throat there is burning and scraping 
stitching pains in the throat. The throat is dark red or purple. I believe that Drosseroy has a clinical symptom of great value. Scraping in the larynx and cough after eating. And it's proving it has cough after drinking. It has especially cough after eating and drinking cold things. This cough comes from tickling in the larynx and constrictions in the larynx. Nausea and vomiting. Vomiting of blood and bile in the morning and vomiting of mucus and food when coughing. Coughing until he rushes and vomits. Constricting pains in the pit of the stomach. Constricting pains in the sides of the abdomen. Colic after sour food. Perhaps the most troublesome irritation found in this remedy is in the larynx, where there will be found clutching, cramping, constricting, and burning. Hoarseness and continued irritation causing coughing and continued irritation and scraping of the larynx. Accumulation of mucus in the larynx, dryness in the larynx, spasms of the epiglottis. Violent spasmodic cough from tickling in the larynx. Violent tickling in the larynx brings on cough, rousing him from sleep, coming on every few hours with increasing intensity making the remedy resemble whooping cough, in which it has been very useful. Sensation in the larynx like a feather. Spasms of the larynx. Spasms of the extremities when coughing. The cough is brought on from tickling, from accumulation of mucus in the larynx. These conditions are found in physis of the larynx, in whooping cough, in laryngitis, and in catar of the larynx. Spasmodic difficulties of the chest and larynx cause difficult breathing and suffocation. Sensation as of something in the chest preventing breathing when talking or coughing. Difficult breathing and cough coming after midnight. Difficult breathing especially on waking. Not able to utter a sound. Difficult breathing and suffocating sensation. The face becomes purple from spasms in the larynx. Compression of the chest. These attacks of suffocation come on with the cough or come upon lying down. Ismatic breathing from talking and constriction in the larynx. Deep sounding, hoarse cough, rough scraping cough, loud whooping cough, spasmodic whooping cough. Violent constriction of the chest and muscles of the throat and larynx with whooping cough. Whooping cough coming in paroxysms of two or three hours, but violently worse after lying down at night and toward three o'clock in the morning. Most tormenting tickling in the larynx surging to cough. Paroxysmal dry cough from tickling in the larynx. Spasmodic cough, sympathetic cough from spinal irritation. Violent spasmodic cough in young girls going into consumption. Cough with expectoration of bright red or black clotted blood. Bloody expectoration. These spasmodic coughs come often during measles or after an attack of measles. An irritation in the larynx remains. It is one of the most frequently indicated remedies for measles. Like carboveg. Severe attacks of stitching in the chest when sneezing or coughing. He must press on the chest with the hand for relief. Makes an effort to hold chest with the hand when coughing, the cough is so violent. Compression of the chest, burning sensation in the chest, stitching pains in the chest. It is a very useful remedy in chronic bronchitis with spasmodic cough. It is a great palliative for the spasmodic cough that occurs in consumption and all along the course of tuberculosis of the lungs. In these chest complaints, pains between the shoulders, pains in the back as if bruised from coughing, coldness in the hands and feet and blueness of the extremities, cramps in the extremities with the cough. The cough becomes so violent that the patient goes into convulsions. Along with these spasmodic coughs especially in physical conditions there are febrile attacks. Chill and chilliness and one-sided chill. Chill and fever with whooping cough. Chill and fever with inflammation of the larynx. The heat as well as the cough is worse after midnight. Cold sweat on the forehead and on the extremities. Sweat over the whole body following the fever. Copious sweat all over the whole body with the cough. The cough ends in great exhaustion. Whooping cough with fever. Thanks for watching this video. If you want more videos like Drosera, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon. To learn homeopathy course online free with homeopathy materia medica. Comment us your feedback and what you want in the next video. Like and share this video with your friends and family. For paid and free consultancy online, 
Visit homeopathymedicines.com and mashclinic.com. Thank you. Have a nice day. Stay healthy, stay happy.